Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new B-Link GTR7 Pro, and this just happens to be B-Link's most powerful mini PC offering to date. And that's because it's using the fastest Phoenix Point APU on the market right now at the time of making this video, the Ryzen 9 7940HS. And if you're not familiar with these Phoenix Point APUs, they utilize Zen 4 cores and RDNA 3 graphics. The 7940HS is an absolute beast. A couple months back, B-Link released a very similar PC with a lower end APU known as the GTR7, but this is the Pro model. That one actually had the 7840HS, which is still a great performer, but the 7940HS does offer more iGPU performance and especially more CPU performance. By the time the Pro model is released to the public, it will have a new bottom plate. So they've kind of just redesigned it, added some ventilation here to keep it a little cooler. But I haven't run into any issues with this yet, and I've been running it at kind of the highest wattage I can get it up to. Inside of the box, along with the Pro model, we've got a vase mount, some hardware for the vase mount, 6-foot HDMI cable, and their newly designed 106-watt magnetic power supply. Now this does work out well for these PCs, but I kind of wish they would have stuck with the barrel jack just because we've now got kind of a proprietary power supply, and if anything goes wrong with it, you do have to order it directly from B-Link. And I did want to show you how this works. I mean, it's very simple. It's magnetic, so it's going to sit right in here, and it sits flush with the bottom of the unit, so it can sit on the table. It's not going to interfere with anything. It is 90 watts, which is plenty for the 7940HS, but again, I really do wish it was a barrel jack, just because, you know, if something does go wrong with this, you have to get a B-Link branded version. The overall design from the base model to the Pro version has stayed the same. Up front, we've got a power button. We've also got a BIOS reset button, full-size USB 3.2, USB 4, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and we have a fingerprint sensor up top. B-Link loves putting these on here so we can sign in really quickly with Windows. And around back, we've got two full-size USB 2.0 ports, two more full-size 3.2 ports, another USB 4, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, another 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and USB-C. In total, we can do four displays out of the GTR7 Pro. We've got display port, HDMI, and both of the USB 4 ports. Taking a look at the overall specs, like I mentioned, with the Pro version, we get that AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS. Cores are based on Zen 4. We've got 8 of them with 16 threads, and it's got a boost up to 5.2 GHz. Just a uh, single and multi-core performance here is really amazing with the Zen 4 mobile APUs, but we've also got that built-in Radeon 780M iGPU. It's based on RDNA 3, it's got 12 compute units, and it runs at up to 2800 MHz. The lower end models actually run it up to 27, that 100 MHz isn't going to make a huge difference, but it's nice we've got a little bit of a boost. This came with 32GB of DDR5 at 5600 MHz. We've got two M.2 slots in here, and it'll support PCIe 4.0 NVMe drives, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.3, and this is running Windows 11. Before we get into testing, I wanted to give you a look at the internals, and it's actually really easy to get in here. We've just got four screws on the bottom, and then in order to get to the RAM and the SSDs in here, we will need to remove three more for this new system they have here. This is their cooling system. As you can see, it's got a fan and a heatsink integrated. But once that's out of the way, we've got access to both of those PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots and our dual-channel DDR5. They're using Crucial here right out of the box, which is really awesome. It's running at 5600 megahertz and unfortunately even from the bios with some mods there's no way to overclock this all right so here it is i've been up and running with windows 11 for a little while now the pc itself is a bit bigger than some of the other minis on the market but uh for good reason i mean we've got a lot of io here and an awesome cooling system one of b-link's big marketing strategies for these new 7000 series mini pcs they've been releasing is the fact that these can run up to 65 watts and it is true out of the box this will reach 65 watts which is great especially for a higher end apu like this because after all that wattage needs to be split up between the 8 zen 4 cores and that igpu and to tell you the truth the cooling system they've implemented here can handle a bit more wattage if you wanted to throw a little more at it using a third-party app but i'm going to leave it at the stock configuration i've actually seen it boost up to around 68 watts from 65 and yet yeah, offers great performance and by the way just a couple days ago amd finally released the official drivers for that radeon 780m igpu i've seen some people saying that they've been running into issues but i did a clean install and everything's been working great 
So now you can actually head directly over to the AMD website and download these drivers for the 780M, be it from the uh, 7840U on up. But my main use case scenario for a PC like this would be gaming on this iGPU. And the first one I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077, just to show you what this thing can really do. I've got Afterburner running up in the top left hand corner, and right now we're at 1080p low setting. Remember, we've got integrated graphics, so we do need to drop some of those settings down, but uh, just seeing Cyberpunk 2077 run at 1080p on integrated graphics is really amazing, especially how it's running right now. And by the end of this run, I had an average of 82 FPS, 1080p low on an iGPU. In all actuality, this is some pretty crazy performance given that we're just working with an iGPU. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were a few benchmarks, and the first one on the list is Geekbench 6. And I'm going to tell you, I was blown away by what we got out of this thing. Single core, 2,517, multi, 13,313. This is definitely the highest score that I've seen out of any mobile CPU or APU I've ever tested. And just to put it into perspective for you, the 7840HS got a single core of 2,353, multi 10,293. Both of these were running at 65 watts. Taking a look at some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid, 31,732, Fire Strike, 7,887. And finally, Time Spy with a 3300. Remember, this is an iGPU and we're only using 5600 MHz RAM. I've seen a bit higher out of the 780M even at a lower clock, but it was really because it was using 7500 mega transfers per second RAM, much faster than what we have here. But either way, this is definitely getting up to the top of the charts when it comes to iGPU performance in these synthetic benchmarks. Now it's time to take a look at some more PC gaming on this machine. Here's Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, high settings, and I do disable ray tracing when I go to high. It sets it to medium, you know, with the preset, and these iGPUs just don't like ray tracing yet, so I always disable it. But with it set up like this, still looks absolutely amazing, and we got an average of 91 FPS. At 900p, high settings, you can lock it down in 120 and play it all day. Next up, we've got Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. I thought this was really impressive. We're only at low settings, but we are at 1080p with this one, and we can get over 60. We got an average of 67 FPS. This is the newest game that I'll be testing in this video, and uh, you know, more optimizations are on the way for these iGPUs, but you can definitely play it now. Street Fighter VI is another one I wanted to test. We're at medium settings, 1080p, and with a lot of the fighting games on the market right now, basically all of them that I've tested from Mortal Kombat 11, Injustice 2, Street Fighter 5, you can run these at 1080p. Some older ones can definitely go up to high, but on average, we're 1080p medium with fighting games on this machine. Here's Doom Eternal. This one performs great on these machines with no ray tracing. We're at medium settings, 1080p. Awesome performance. We got an average of 83 FPS, and going into this, I knew I was going to get great performance out of this machine, especially at 65 watts. This iGPU can definitely run this game really well. Whenever I test Horizon Zero Dawn, I just like using the built-in benchmark, and right now we're at 1080p medium settings, really smooth here, and by the end, we actually had a decent frame rate. Average of 87, max of 185, and that minimum is a bit scary, coming in at 6, but remember, those are kind of micro stutters, and with these iGPUs, you can kind of expect that every once in a while. Hey! Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a lot of people's go-to benchmark, so I figured I'd go ahead and test it out here. We're at 1080p low, and it didn't fare as good as I thought it was. Now, with some resolution scaling, we could definitely get much better out of it at 1080p, but I'd say drop it down to 900 because on average with this, 58 FPS. We could actually go down to the lowest setting if we wanted to at 1080, but I'd say low 900 would net you some great performance out of this one also. 
And finally, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Still on these iGPUs, we do have to drop this down if we want to get up to 60. You can see at 720p low settings, we can get a pretty steady 60 average with this setup here. At 1080, we could actually go to 45 at low settings, but I wanted to see if we could kind of lock this down at 60, and it is possible, but it is at the cost of, you know, quality. We're at 720p right now. Another thing I like to monitor while doing all of my testing is total system power consumption from the wall. So I use a kilowatt meter, and at idle, this whole system here pulls 18 watts. Average gaming, 79 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to draw from the wall while maxing out the CPU and GPU was 93 watts. Remember, this comes with a 106 watt power supply, so we haven't drawn over that just yet, but you know, if I wanted to up the TDP on this, we could definitely exceed what that power supply can put out, and that's one of the big reasons I wish they also had a barrel jack on the back of this. That way, I could just grab a different power supply, third-party power supply, 120 watt, maybe 144. I could take the TDP up on this and not have to worry about overrunning that included PSU. But the way it's set up out of the box works well, never shut down on me, and I mean, we've got enough power here for the way it is right now. So yeah, I'm really digging the performance that the new B-Link GTR7 Pro is putting out, and it's really coming down to that APU being able to go up to 65 watts. Now I did a little bit of testing and we can actually take this up to 80 using a third party app. Cooler seems to kind of handle it, but it will get a bit loud. I mean, we're definitely kind of overdriving everything. But with some of those benchmarks and games that it didn't fare too well in, we could get a bump in performance given that we can keep the CPU clocks and the GPU clocks up with a little extra wattage. So if that's something you want to see, let me know in the comments below. But so far, I've been having a really good time with the Pro model. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.